That gives me a memory. A little while ago, I went to America and was lucky enough to spend two weeks in New York City. That place is something else. It was an unforgettable experience. I caught up with a friend of mine, Paul, who was living there at the time. Most of my other mates are completely hectic guys. They ride bikes. They get loose as. And then they like to set up a plank to fight on. They just go at it as hard as they can. Paul isn't really like that. He's quite a sensitive person, forever nervous and somewhat troubled. While sightseeing in Midtown Manhattan, we decided to go on a tour of the NBC studios at 30 Rockefeller Plaza. As lifelong fans of behind the scenes magic, we couldn't have been more excited. Two members of the NBC page program led our group of about a dozen tourists through the enchanting mezzanine and into TV paradise. It was very interesting learning about the history of the building and the NBC network. We even got to visit the sets they use for tapings of Saturday Night Live and The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. The pages told us many interesting and fucked up stories about some of our favourite stars. The tour concluded with a truly unique experience. A small animated one explained that our tour group would be creating our very own late night talk show. Everyone on the tour volunteered for different roles. The camera crew, the Gibbons in the control booth, the house band, the announcer, the big celebrity guest, and most importantly, the host. I believe that I am a born entertainer. Growing up, I was a member of the Maroochydore Youth Theatre Company. I actually played the part of a businessman in a local production. I received rave reviews from family and friends. They said I was nice with it. That night, it began to snow in New York, and I received an email from NBC, a Vimeo link of our show. I felt like I was going to explode. I had ever so eagerly put my hand up to host the show, but I was beaten to it. I'm Alexandra McDonald, and here's your host, Rico Santos. Hello, and thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me on my first night as a host of On Air at NBC Studios. Exciting, right? Now, I don't want to sound too bitter, but the guy didn't have a clue what he was doing. Absolutely zero charisma. Really grim. Grim. We are coming to you live from 30 Rockefeller, Rockefeller Plaza, where some of my late night idols got their starts. <clears throat> okay, maybe do us a favor and don't cough during the opening monologue. <clears throat> <clears throat> We've got a terrific show for you tonight, but first say hello to the 30 Rock and Roll Band. From a tourist to host of, an on, of on air at NBC Studios in under 30 minutes. Wow. Maybe I should run, make a run for president. Hey, I, I think you got my vote. <laughs> I'd probably settle for a, a reality show if I were you. So, yeah. On air has so much talent behind the scenes. Let it, let's give it up for, uh, for the crew. The control booth. They threw me in the control booth. We've all got a lot of respect for the technical wizards who bring these programs to life with their computers and their gadgets, but that is not where I belong. If you've got a perfect, golden, freshly made almond croissant, bursting with flavor, pumping with delight, why would you keep it hidden at the back of the bakery? It needs to be at the front of the display cabinet. I'm so excited uh, to bring out our first guest. Uh, they're starring. Even with the help of the auto cue, Rico was totally lost. He should be ashamed. Oh. Just for, all right. Hello, Jess. Great to have you here. How was New York treating you? Great. Love the, the celebrity interview was a complete turkey. I also heard you've been filming some noisy action scenes late at night in the Lower East Side. What's, uh, what's the worst complaint you've gotten? Uh, it was really late at night, and we just had people throwing things from their windows, oh. very upset at us, wanting to get some sleep. Just partying very hard, I see. All right. Sounds like a typical morning at my house. Um, so, uh, I hear you're doing your own stunts? Yeah. The lack of chemistry honestly surprises me. 
I saw on Rico's Facebook that they've actually been married for four years. I believe we are out of time. Uh, you, you have to come back and visit again. Uh, will you do that? Yeah, of course. Great. Great. So good to have you here. Thank you for dropping by. All right. Any time for you, but next time I'd like to be on the Tonight Show. Ooh, okay, and I'd rather have better guests. <laughs> What the fuck? The next day, Paul had bought two tickets to see a basketball game. The New York Knicks taking on the Dallas Mavericks at Madison Square Garden. He'd saved up for months to get primo seats. I told him we wouldn't be able to go. We had unfinished business. We had to go back to the rock. Ah. Oh. Thank you, thank you. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm right. Uh, thanks so much. I immediately felt powerful. I wasn't sure if I should wear my beanie or not, but I think I made the right decision. Yeah, I mean, can you believe it? Uh, can you believe all this? Wow. Maybe I should make a run for president. Well, be careful. A lot of um, presidents get assassinated. We've got a psycho show. Please go crazy for the rock and rock and roll bands. All my life, people have told me to shut up. Well, tonight I finally get the chance to get out some of my ideas. And no one can tell me to shut up. And no one can tell me to shut up. I'm so thrilled to bring out a very, our first guest. Do I sit down there? Oh, so yeah, he's the smallest man in the world, and he's here in New York City. Yeah, so you're a movie star. Tell us about your movie role. It's just me and the Top Gear boys. My man. Yeah, so it's pretty cold in New York. Have you got a beanie? Yeah, I got a lot of beanies. Yeah, me too. I prepared meticulously for the celebrity interview by watching every single video that had been uploaded to the NBC Vimeo page. So I hear you're doing your own stunts. What's the craziest you've done so far? Yeah, um, I had to jump out of a, an airplane and land with a parachute. Wow. Jump out of a moving car, a lot of stuff. Last time I did that, I woke up in Vegas. <laughs> so, I hear you're doing your own stunts. What's the craziest stunt you've had to do so far? Uh, I think probably jump out of building. Oh, yeah? Yes. Last time I did that, I woke up in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> so, I hear you're doing your own stunts. What is the craziest stunt you had to do so far? Well, what I really can do, or used to be able to do, is jump up and click my heels twice. <laughs> Last time I did that, I woke up in Vegas. <laughs> so, I hear you're doing your own stunts. What's the craziest stunt you've had to do so far? Well, I had to get into this car and drive really fast, climb out, get around, have somebody hand uh, the, the steering wheel over to here, and then we did it. But a lot of that's all just just uh, uh, special effects. Last time I did that, I woke up in Vegas. <laughs> so, uh, what's the craziest thing you've ever, what's the craziest thing you've ever done so far? One time, I went to sleep in Vegas. Last time I did that, I woke up in Vegas. I felt so good and I didn't want to say goodbye, but I remembered the words of the king. I've loved every second of doing it. I certainly have never ever wanted to overstay my welcome. I've never wanted it to be something I consider a job. I've never wanted it to be something that I don't get excited to, to wake up in the morning and go and do. Thank you for visiting. I'm Ivan Milad. Good night.
Oh, and did I mention that everyone on the tour received a commemorative pin? A lot of that's all just, just uh, uh, special effects.